What's going on everyone? It's good to be back uh, with the 26 bio lane video log. Um, I want to do some housekeeping stuff first and then we're going to get right into it. Um, just got back from a tour to the UK and Ireland. It was awesome. Uh, had a great time. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Ben Coomber who, uh, who had me over, um, set up the tour, took me around. Uh, great guy and really uh, really made everything easy. Um, had everything ready to go, like meals and everything. Um, just just made it really helpful. I want to thank uh, the Foundry in East London uh, for hosting us there. I want to thank SSC in Ireland for hosting us there. And I'd like to thank uh, Ross Thompson Fitness in Durham for hosting us there. It was a, it was a great time. Um, I enjoyed meeting a lot of you guys. Uh, really sorry I couldn't make it to Body Power. Uh, I really wanted to go, but I uh, just couldn't make it happen. And uh, uh, I'm sorry for those of you who, uh, who wanted to meet me who didn't get a chance. Um, I will be back. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get something done there. So <clears throat> uh, I appreciate it, all the support. And again, if, you, uh, if I didn't get a chance to see you, I'm really sorry. And uh, hopefully you can do it in the future. I have a lot of exciting things coming up that are going to be announced here in the coming months. Um, the, the VIP tour in Australia was really successful. We have our, our USA VIP tour, uh, VIP camp in Tampa coming up next month. <laughs> Don't ask about that because it sold out in five hours and that was only to my clients. Uh, it never went public because it sold out so fast. So do not ask me about that. But we, uh, we actually have a camp uh, coming up in Denver that's going to be myself, Ben Escrow, and Dr. Mike Zordos. Um, if you want more information about that, I'll put the information here um, so you guys can check it out. It's going to be a single day camp. It's going to be awesome. If you've never uh, met Ben or Mike uh, or myself, it's going to be something really cool. Uh, you'll learn a lot, get some really hard training in, and have a great time. Okay. Now with that stuff out of the way, I want to get into to, um, the topic for today about success, happiness, failure, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I had a client the other day, this got inspired by, by a few different people, um, by Ryan Doris, Corey Probst, some other VIP uh, guests that we had in Australia. Uh, but I had, a, I, had a, I had something from a client the other day and that they've been having a really tough time. They did a reverse diet, and uh, now we're, we're kind of bringing them back down, and they're still kind of struggling um, to, to drop weight. Um, one of the things that I've seen is people who have been kind of restricted for a longer period of time is uh, even after they've reversed and they've gotten their calories up to normal, they still tend to be pretty resistant to, to dieting down. And, uh, and I understand that frustration. Like, I, I get it. Um, uh, like I said, I, uh, my PhD was something I wanted to quit at a certain point. But they said something that struck me. They said, "Well, you know, I'll just I'll just be happy once I get a six pack. Like once I get my abs back, I'll be happy." Really? <laughs> really? You think? Ha I mean, you think? And I'm not trying to pick on this person because a lot of people have this mindset. They think, "Oh, if I if I get this six pack, or if I'm ripped." or if I get this job, or if I graduate with this degree, uh, if I make this amount of money, I'll be happy or I'll be successful. And that is complete bullshit. It is absolutely the biggest falsehood. It, there is no such thing as happily ever after. There is no such thing as there was an event and now it's happily ever after. Okay, I'm gonna explain why in a minute. Well, let me tell you something. Um, some of the most miserable people I've ever met in terms of low self-esteem, um, bad relationships, just all around like unhappy people I've ever met or people with fantastic physiques. People with physiques that most people would like give up anything for. Because uh, if, if you base, I could promise you, if you base all your self-worth on what you see in the mirror every day, you will be an unhappy person. I don't care how good of a physique you get. If it's all about what you see in the mirror, you will be an unhappy person. Just like if you base all your happiness on how much money you make, you will be an unhappy person. Okay? That's all there is to it. 
When I was 20 years old, all I cared about was how, how, how good do I look? And I woke up every day and my legs weren't how I wanted them to look. I was killing myself in the gym and I still had small legs. And every day I'd wake up and I would beat myself up over that. For what? How was that helping me? It was complete bullcrap. Okay? I didn't enjoy the journey, I didn't enjoy the process, and I was sucking at it. Okay? Let me, uh, let me explain something to you that my friend Ryan Doris talks about in his talk, uh, Success is a State of Being. And this is a talk Ryan gave, um, and it really, something he said resonated with me. He asked uh, me, how long was it from when I had the idea that I wanted to do my PhD until when I actually got my PhD? I said, well, it was about eight years. He said, and how long afterwards did you have a feeling of euphoria? Like, did that feeling of celebration last? And I would say it was like three or four weeks. Like, that I just really felt so accomplished and proud. He's like, so you worked eight years for something that basically brought you four weeks of happiness, of achievement. Now don't get me wrong, I still look at my PhD and think about what I did and I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very proud of that. But he's right. That's why there is no happily ever after. There has to be something, some goal, something. But if you're always focused on the end goal, if you don't enjoy the journey, if you don't enjoy the grind, if you don't find passion in what you're doing, you will always be unhappy. Always. Okay? I, I get updates from people sometimes who I read these updates and I'm like, why are you doing this? You hate fitness. You hate doing this. Because everything is negative, negative, negative. Okay? They have no passion for what they're doing. All they care about is when do I get my six pack? Or when do, uh, when, when do I no longer have fat on my legs? Or, or this and that. You're never going to be happy. Never. Until you find passion in what you do. Okay? Ryan Dora said, uh, Do not try to fake passion because eventually someone will come along who is truly passionate and they will fucking embarrass you. And that is the truest thing I have ever heard in my life. It's like my good friend, uh, uh, Dr. Zordos, talking about undulating periodization training. Have you ever heard Mike give a talk? I mean, the dude is fired up. If somebody came in and just kind of liked periodization and talked after Mike, they're going to look dumb, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's like if you had a teacher in high school or grade school or whatever who was just kind of monotone and they were just trying to there and they were getting through and it was just a job, you could tell. You can tell when somebody fakes it, all right? But if you had somebody who was up there and they were pumped up and they were given, you know, you know they, they actually cared about the the educational process, they cared about giving you the information, they were excited about it, they were awesome. They were probably one of your favorite teachers, even if it was a class you didn't like. Why? Because they have passion, because they love the process, they love the grind, okay? I get so sick of people who think, who have this one-dimensional mentality, oh, I'll just be happy when I get here. The same thing with my, my pro card. It was six years from the day that I said, okay, I want to be a natural pro. Actually, it was five years. I'm sorry. Five years from that day till I achieved my pro card. You know how long that feeling of accomplishment lasts? About three weeks. Okay? But I thought, that, I thought, oh, if I, get, if I turned natural pro, I'd be, I'd be happy. I would just be happy. No, dude. I mean, I was happy for, for doing that. But if that was it, if I didn't find passion in what I do every single day, I, I would have quit a long time ago, okay? And that's what I see. I see people who are so focused on the mountaintop, they don't enjoy the climb. They don't enjoy the grind. You have setbacks? <laughs> You're not the only one, okay? Look, I, I, don't, I don't discount, I have empathy for people because I understand. I've had setbacks in my life. Just because you fail does not make you a failure, okay? That's something Eric Thomas said. That is so true. But I see people, we, we are a generation of quitters. Every time something gets hard, we quit. Okay? Give up. Well, what does quitting do for you? If all of a sudden you, you have this goal and you say, oh, you know what, it's just too hard, I, I can't do it, it's taking too long, and you quit, 
Well, what does that do? Do you suddenly magically not want that thing anymore? No, of course not. You still want it. Maybe your ego feels a little better because you're not holding it out there as a goal. But if you never quit, there is no failure. There's only setbacks, okay? You can overcome those. And people who think that people who are successful, success is a battle of attrition, okay? And success is a constant thing. It is a state of being. It is not, oh, I got this job as a CEO, or oh, you think those people are, are happy just because they got there? You're out of your mind. The people who are the best at what they do, they are the best at what they do because they come in, they may have bad days, but they come in every day fired up to do what they're going to do. Okay? I made a, uh, I made a post on uh, Facebook and I was talking about, I, I posted a video of the last competition I ever did back in 2010. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting on stage again one day, but not before I'm ready. Okay? And somebody said, hey, Lane, how much, how much stage weight do you think you've added from the last time you competed? This was four years ago. And I said, well, honestly, probably not much because I've been training hard for 10 years. Um, and I've been training for, well, 15 years, but I've been training really, really, really hard for the last 10 years, for over a decade. Actually, probably more like 13 now that I think about it. Uh, and there just comes a, I've gained most of the muscle I'm going to gain as a drug-free guy. That's just all there is to it. And he was like, wow, does that, does that upset you? Does that, well, that would depress me. Well, doesn't that depress you? I said, well, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, would I love to gain more muscle? Absolutely. But does it, I tell you what, if you told me, hey, you will never gain another ounce of muscle, you will never lose another ounce of fat, and you will never gain another ounce of strength. Well, I mean, would, would, that, would that stink? I mean, yeah. But I would still come to the gym and train every day because I love it. I love it. I have a passion for it. I'm fired up about it. Anybody who's ever been to one of my camps who's ever trained with me, they know what I'm talking about. Okay? This isn't an act. All right? When I get in there, I am fired up to do what I'm going to do. Okay? I love training. I love it. Okay? That's why I'm good at it. That's why I haven't had big breaks over the course of 15 years. And I've been consistent for that long because it's a lifestyle. I love the grind. I love obstacles. Okay? When I tore my pec years ago, I mean, I didn't like tearing my pec, but once it, uh, once it was repaired, because doctors didn't think they were going to be able to repair this. They thought it was, they, well, one of them said that you know, it was like sewing hamburger back together and that they weren't sure they would ever be able to get it back to normal. Well, I was fortunate enough that the repair went really well. I had a really great surgeon, uh, Dr. Michael Corcoran in uh, Kankakee, Illinois. Uh, big shout out to him. Thank you, Dr. Corcoran. And um, he did a phenomenal job. And I remember waking up from the anesthesia. And the first thing I did was like grab something and ask the nurse, did it work? Did it work? Did the surgery work? Because like I said, they, they weren't sure it was going to work. And she's like, yes, it worked. And I remember thinking, it was just like right then, that it was like click. And I didn't even care. They said it was going to be 18 months to two years before I was back to 100%. I didn't care. I just thought, I'm coming back. I'm excited because I'm going to show people. Everybody who said that I was done, that that was it, that, you know, that was going to be the end of my career, I'm going to show them. Not only that, I'm going to show myself, okay? And, yeah, it, it was hard coming back, starting out lifting with nothing, just doing mobility work, right? Just getting my hand above my head was difficult. I was in a brace for six weeks, just cuffed to my side. Uh, and then starting out with five, one pound dumbbells and two pound and five pound and ten pound. But I loved it. I loved the grind because I, I knew that once I got past that obstacle, that that was going to be so awesome having to go through that. Obstacles are only there to signify how much you want something. All right? You think you got problems? You think your life is tough? I promise you somebody came from worse with more obstacles and did better. Okay? I promise you that. I have a, I have a good buddy, and I don't want to mention his name, um, but he, uh, when he was young, he found his father dead. Uh, he'd had a heart attack, right? Grew up a child of a single mother, but made something for himself. Did really well in school, played college uh, sports. Um, did really well for himself, got a great job, 
and uh, got married. And then a couple years later, he called me and said, hey, man, I found out my wife's been cheating on me. I said, oh, my God, I'm really sorry. And it, and it, it devastated him. But he, he came back. You know, fortunately, they didn't have any kids together. And, uh, and he got engaged to another gal, and it didn't work out. And, I mean, he was, again, he was, like, really crushed. Um, and then he met another gal uh, who he's currently married to, and she was awesome. They got married. That Finally, he's ready to start his life, and he goes in before they can even go on their honeymoon, and he has, goes in the doctor for back pain. Finds out he has cancer. Not just cancer, he has stage 4 cancer. It's spread to several other parts of his body. And um, he, I never saw him get negative. He said, right from the beginning, he said, I'm going to beat it. Um, I'm going to, and you know what? This guy was a guy who trained, trained hard. He used to be my training, one of my training partners. And uh, he lost, he gained and lost like, I think it was like 50 pounds fluctuation between all the chemotherapy and not being able to train and all this different stuff. And I never saw him get negative. Um, and even when he was sick, you know, from all the chemo, he was grinding. He was positive. He said, I'm going to beat this thing. And you know what? A year and a half later, 100% cancer free. We all should be so blessed to have that grind mentality. All right? You want to find out what kind of grind you got, what kind of heart you got? Get your life challenged. Get, get something, get the very core of your being possibly taken from you. And let's see how you respond. Okay? How are you going to roll with that? How are you going to roll with that? Okay? A lot of people will pack it in. Say, you know what? I've had so much drama in my life or whatever, I'm, I'm done. I'm just, this is, my, this is my destiny. That's bullshit. There is no destiny to what you make for yourself. Alright? As my friend Ryan Doris says, grind that shit. Okay? You know the uh, meme with the, the, the Asian guy from The Hangover that says, whatever, and then it says, okay, but did you die? Because everybody, like, a lot of times in the physique stuff, everybody makes it out like it's life and death. Oh, my God, I, I gained some body fat after my show. Really? Really? That's what you got to complain about? All right, now, I, I get it. I get it. Like, I've been there. I know it's tough. Okay, I know having a screwed up metabolism can be tough. I, I get that, all right? But that's still first world problems, okay? Grind that shit, dude. As my friend Ryan Doris says, grind that shit. Find meaning in what you do, all right? Be fired up, okay? Say, yeah, I've had this setback. I gained more weight than I wanted to, or I fluctuated, or I got an injury, and I'm, I'm trying to come back from it. Find passion in overcoming that and grinding through it every day, every day, okay? It's easy to be fired up and easy to be passionate when stuff's going well. The true test of passion is can you grind that when everything goes to hell, okay? When everything's not going right, can you still find meaning in what you do, okay? Because if you don't, even if you reach the mountaintop, it will be empty. It will be hollow, okay? I once told somebody, um, they said, man, it must have been really hard having to work a decade to just get your legs caught up to, to being normal. Um, you know, because the people know how hard I, I train. Uh, and still, it took me so long to just get my legs to the point where it looked like I actually trained legs, okay? And they said, man, you, you must have, just, you probably sometimes just wish you could have taken a magic pill that just caught them up. And I thought to myself, I said, no, no, I don't wish that because it would have made it empty. All right. What, what, what? Do you want to climb the mountain? Do you get more fulfillment from climbing the mountain, from grinding every single step? Or do you get more fulfillment from taking a helicopter up to the top? You get more fulfillment from climbing it. The first guy that ever climbed Everest without oxygen, when he came back down, they asked him, why did you go up there? Why did you go up there to die? He said, I didn't go up there to die. I went up there to live. Okay? It's, in, it's important to keep an eye on your big goals. It's important to keep an eye on your big goals. But it's also important to enjoy the journey. Okay? To have little goals along the way. And that 
value, happiness comes from valuing yourself, okay? I was a miserable person until I finally one day realized, hey, I'm a good guy, I treat people well, I work hard, I have integrity, I like myself. Would I be proud if my son grew up to, to have the same values as me? And I can honestly answer that question and say yes. And that's what makes me a happy person. Not the fact that I can squat over 600 pounds or deadlift over 700 pounds or that I won uh, my class at the Natural Pro Show a few years ago. That's not what makes me a happy person. My happiness comes from the fact that I have passion for what I do and I believe in who I am as a person. And I wish you that same level of quote unquote happiness. But there is no happily ever after. Enjoy the grind. Find passion in what you do. All right, thanks guys. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you guys later. Never quit.